Hey Miami Lakers and welcome to our daily COVID-19 update. Uh, nuestro update todos los días aquí en nuestra comunidad. El coronavirus. Sorry, it's a little noisy today out here. Uh, but today we're going to have an important discussion too. We have the chair of our Economic Development Committee, uh, Eddie Blanco, who's going to be giving us an update on the work that he and the New Normal Initiative uh, for reopening the economy for the work that they're doing up in, uh, up in County Hall. Uh, Mr. Manager, you want to give a quick update as to what's going on here in our town before we pass it over to Eddie? Yeah, the, uh, the daily update is that there's still only 43 uh, cases in the town of Miami Lakes. That's only two new cases in the last nine days. It's incredible news. It's a slowing or flattening of the curve, at least in our little uh, pocket here at Miami Lakes. So that's great news. Solamente tenemos 43 casos confirmados positivo aquí in Miami Lakes. Que solamente ha sido un aumento de dos casos en los últimos nueve días. So la curva ya se está disminuyendo y es buenísima noticia y es debido a todo el trabajo que ustedes han, uh, han hecho, ustedes los, los residentes de Miami Lakes. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And I know a little bit later on we'll be talking about parks uh, and the importance of reopening parks and what's going to happen on Monday. But I want to hand it over to Eddie Blanco, the Chair of Economic Development Committee. Uh, we're very fortunate that Eddie, being the chair of our committee, is leading part of the push to, to look at reopening our economy uh, with the infectious disease experts up in County Hall, which is truly amazing. He's going to be working on setting those rules throughout Miami-Dade County. El señor Eddie Blanco, que representa el Comité de la Economía de nuestra comunidad, está también representando nuestra área y el condado entero en haciendo las regulaciones como reabrir nuestra economía. Eddie, welcome. Thank you. Um, well, as, as, as the manager said earlier, the numbers are continuing to, with the flattening the curve initiative, really has been working. And we are now looking at ways to get the economy re-going. Re um, we're working with uh, Jimenez's office with the New Normal Initiative, where business leaders, everything from small, very small business owners to big conglomerates are coming together with the infectious disease experts and medical experts to come up with, with processes and procedures that will allow us to open businesses back up in a way that will be safe, in a way that will help to continue the, the low numbers, but help our local businesses get back in gear so that we don't, uh, you know, we don't face a, a real, real significant economic impact. So this is, that, that's what we're trying to do, uh, you know, lessen the curve of the economic impact as well. So um, also on April 30th, the council will be reconvening. Uh, in a special meeting to reconsider uh, some of the initiatives that the Economic Development Committee has put forth. So I encourage you all to tune in. Thank you. Eddie, ¿quiere hablar de eso en español para muchos residentes que hablan español? Cómo no, con mucho gusto. Nosotros, la Economic Development Committee, puso algunas recomendaciones al comisionado para que consideran algunos cambios para poder mejorar la economía. Y también estamos un comité especial con el, 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 el mayor del um, Miami-Dade oh. County, Condado, eh, eh, Jiménez, eh, una iniciativa para, para mejorar la economía, empezar a abrir los negocios de una forma que sea práctica y también que sea eh, de una, una forma que no se, no, que no se desarrolla el, el COVID de nuevo. Eh, muchas gracias, Eddie, y gracias por tu trabajo y labor en el condado. Thank you, Eddie, for working so hard, you and your committee, but more importantly, representing our community with the New Normal Initiative with our, our county mayor. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, multiple Miami Lakers. I know one of the other folks that's working with Eddie uh, is Richard, uh, who owns the oldest barbershop, I believe, in, in Dade County, over there in Lake Patricia Shopping Center. He's also working as part of the New Normal Initiative to set the regulations uh, for barbershops to reopen throughout Dade County, which is very, very, very important. Those discussions have to happen. And at the end of the day, I think, regardless if business opens it, it, and, and whatnot, you're still gonna see a lot of folks uh, take that opportunity and reopen their businesses, but you're also gonna see people uh, continue to stay at home. You know, And I think that choice, having that opportunity in a, in a safe manner is so important uh, to, to make sure that we continue moving forward. But on Monday, we do have great news and we want to keep talking about it because we're going to be getting some new regulations in regards to our parks. Our 101 parks in our community, how do we get those reopened in a safe manner as soon as possible so people can start enjoying the great outdoors? Mr. Manager? 
Yeah, as I told, first told you about it uh, yesterday, uh, the Miami-Dade County has set up uh, several working groups to look at three significant areas of our uh, recreation and leisure activities. One are our parks, which are very important to Miami Lakers. Another one is our waterways. I know there's a lot of uh, boat owners uh, here in Miami Lakes. And the third one is our uh, uh, golf courses. And obviously, we definitely have a lot of uh, golfers in Miami Lakes. The, the one that affects the most people is going to be the reopening of our parks. It's going to be done, probably announced on Monday. Uh, we'll put out uh, something either Monday or Tuesday for all of our uh, Miami Lakes residents. And it'll probably take effect either Wednesday or Thursday. So before next weekend, we're going to have a limited reopening of our parks. We're not going to have baseball games, soccer games, etc., organized activities like that. But they will be reopened for leisure activities and casual play. Eh, ya lo oyeron, la semana que viene eh, vamos a coger las regulaciones nuevas empezando el lunes eh, sobre reabrir los parques ya para, para el miércoles y jueves oficialmente parece que vamos a estar reabriendo nuestro parque, nuestra comunidad que es algo bien importante uh, para los, nuestros residentes empezar mirando que la vida eh, normalice otra vez, que eso es bien importante eso gracias señor administrador Miami Lakers, if you have any questions you know, start submitting them now if you have questions about our parks about the Miami Lakes economy, start submitting those now. I can tell you one of the things that Eddie and his committee did was visit uh, a lot of those businesses that are closed right here in this shopping center, right here in all the different shopping centers around town, and ask those business owners, if you were to reopen, you know, what are your thoughts about reopening while not uh, increasing COVID cases? How can you make sure that it is safe? And those discussions have been had. Those recommendations right now, I can tell you, uh, Chair Blanco, is already having those discussions as part of his, his groups uh, with the infectious disease experts in South Florida, which is so, so, so important. Uh, y mami, es, es reciente aquí, los lo parques, la economía, ya son discusiones que se están dando, pero ya se están moviendo hacia adelante. Una cosa que hizo el, el chairman del Comité de la Economía aquí de nuestra comunidad, visitó estos tipos de shopping centers para hablar con los negocios que están cerrados, para preguntarle si es, si abren otra la vez, eh, qué van a hacer para estar seguro que los casos de COVID no siguen eh, creciendo. ¿Cómo pueden abrir una manera eh, que, que esté safe uh, y seguro? Eh, esa, ya es, esas discusiones, esas ideas, Eric los cogió y los está llevando a los doctores de las enfermedades infecciosas, los, los experts de la Universidad de Miami y de Jackson. Ya yo sé que esas conversaciones se están dando. It's so, so important. Soraya de Jesús, is it possible to have a testing site for Miami Lakes residents? Well, right now we have two testing sites that are very, very close to Miami Lakes. We have the one that's at Amelia Air Hard Park in Hialeah. Uh, it's not far from the Hialeah Miami Lakes uh, boundary. And we also have the testing site that's at the football stadium where the Miami Dolphins play. Both of them are close. Right now, and if you look, right, we only have 43 cases. We've only had an increase of two new cases in the last nine days. I, I don't foresee us having a testing site specifically in Miami Lakes for Miami Lakers. But remember, if you have any doubts about uh, you needing your test, make sure you contact either the Miami-Dade Health Department or you can contact your uh, primary care physician and they'll, they'll guide you as to what you need to do. And here's, I think, I think early on, and I know uh, Royal Oaks Park for a while was used as a, as, a, as a research site. They were testing folks randomly to get some data, some of that data got uh, released yesterday, but here is what's so important. I heard these discussions already starting to have that you're going to see more pharmacies. Uh, hopefully, this is what it'll look like. Have some of these tests in the future. That's what I hope uh, that that that'll happen, and to make sure that we have more and more mass testing uh, in our in our community. So uh, I do see Rodolfo is offering. He goes, hey, you know, New Baptist Ch uh, Testament Church. Uh, day Christian, they're available, they're willing willing and able to help if we need them uh, to, to be a testing site. Uh, Jeremy Cobb, where where are the testing sites? Uh, there's an increase in confirmed cases. Uh, don't bring one here, please. He's saying that, that for some reason that wherever there's a testing site, he believes that there's, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, or not. I'm not sure uh, what comes first, the chicken or the egg. I'm not sure if it's that they put the testing site in the hotbeds of the uh, of positive cases or positive cases chase the testing site. I think it's the, 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 the first.
first one, that the uh, the testing sites are usually placed in areas where there's a hot or a high number of uh, positive cases uh, for ease of operation, and uh, the majority of the people will be close to the testing site. So actually, fortunately, since we do not have a lot of uh, positive cases, I don't foresee us having a testing testing site here in the city in the town of Miami Lakes. Look, and those are discussions we could have, but I think what we'll end up seeing, and I hope what we'll end up seeing, is that you'll be able to get a test at CVS. You'll be able to get a, do, do the test at CVS at your local pharmacy. I hope that, that that's what ends up happening. I've, I've heard already the FDA is working on a bunch of different new tests that you'll get those results pretty quickly. So you're starting to see a lot of changes happening uh, really fast, and there's going to be more and more accessibility uh, for testing, which is very, very important in regards to opening up our, our economy. We have to open up our economy, but we need more and more testing. And those discussions are already being had, especially on the levels when you're talking about uh, the FDA and all those different groups uh, working to approve more accessible, more affordable testing uh, for residents, uh, not only Miami Lakes, but all over metropolitan Dade County. Hey, Eddie, uh, you got a question here. Yolanda Bray is asking, will mass uh, what I think this it goes both to both to both ends. You know, will masks be required when parks open? And I think that delves into businesses too. You know, Mr. Manager, the the issue of whether masks will be required has not been determined. We're looking at the draft of the Dade County plan because remember, if uh, how the pecking order works, right? If the federal government dictates something, then the states have to abide by it. If the state dictates something, the counties have to abide by it. And if the county dictates something, the cities have to abide by it. So if the county's order dictates that masks need to be worn, then we'll have to wear masks. But we're looking at that, whether they uh, require it or not, we're looking to see if that is... Now, I understand, like, for exhaustive or uh, strenuous type exercise, like jogging or running, a mask probably isn't practical, right? First of all, you're not close to anybody long enough for it to be an exposure. But first of all, it makes it almost impossible to breathe as you're jogging or doing uh, extensive exercise like that. But for walking or more casual or more passive type exercises, we probably will see some type of requirement for mask. But that will come out on Monday or Tuesday, and the actual uh, reopening, limited reopening of the parks will start uh, in the middle of the week. Eddie, you wanted to, you have another question here, so maybe you could touch upon both about uh, what your thoughts are, what's happening on the county level in regards to when we open up small businesses in regards to masks. And also, I'll, we'll jump into this question too. Rosalind Hamilton is asking, are they considering opening small shops for limited customers in our community here in Miami Lakes? So uh, on the table is a lot of discussion about all those items, but to talk on mask, mask is one that kept coming up, face coverings of the nose and mouth for all parties inside, indoors, is probably gonna be part of phase one, most of the, more than likely. That's definitely on the top of the list in terms of request of, of, of people. Uh, there has been a lot of studies supporting that wearing masks, this is what the doctors tell us, that wearing masks uh, really uh, prevent, you know, helps to prevent the spread. So that's probably very likely on the indoors. Um, as it relates to considering opening small businesses, yeah, I mean, this is all gonna be scaled. The idea is to scale out a model. The idea, the, the, term, uh, the factors are that, you know, smaller shops, less people, appointment only, they're all parts of this consideration, but I don't want to mislead anybody in terms of what might end up coming out. It's all on the table. Uh, the county mayor's office, as the manager dictated, uh, the county's mayor's office is the one who's going to set out the minimum guidelines. And then from there, we, as a town, we could set more strenuous guidelines if we chose to. Eso, como dijo Eri, eh, 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 están hablando de, la, de, lo, de las tiendas pequeñas aquí en nuestra comunidad. Mira, la señora Rosalind Hamilton eh, tiene una tienda en Main Street que se llama el, el Sports Shop. Y nosotros queremos estar seguros que la señora Hamilton y, y las docenas de otros negociantes aquí en, en nuestra comunidad pueden reabrir de eh, una manera eh, que tenga las la máscaras, de una manera que tenga eh, personas entrando limitadas, pero que puede empezar a reabrir y esas discusiones ya se están teniendo eh, con Eddie. I, I think at, this morning you guys had a, had a call, or was it yesterday? We had, a, we had a call yesterday. We had some email exchanges today. There will be some calls again later today and then another call tomorrow. The goal is to have a comprehensive uh, input 
by tomorrow, Sunday, and so that the mayor's office can then use all that input to come up with the best plan to consider all the residents, all the businesses, and all the medical advice. So you guys heard, let me see if we have any other questions. Yeah, Mayor, while you're looking for another question, I just wanted to interject. The very first thing that the mayor from Dade County uh, set up were the working groups dealing with the leisure and recreation activities. From the time he set those groups together till they came out with a finished product, it was only about 10 days. So the next phase are, is the phase that Eddie uh, Blanco here has been working on, which is the first level of uh, the reopening of our e economy for the businesses. Right? So they've just recently started meeting, but they're moving fast. All of these working groups are moving extremely fast. They just want to do it in a methodical, slow and methodical manner and make sure that we don't do it recklessly and carelessly. So everything we're doing, the, the mayor did the leisure and recreation activities first, and now we're moving on to the next step, which is a limited reopening of some businesses and then work our way to a full open and uh, complete economy. Look, and Eddie, both both Eds, uh, just want to read this from Elvita Regosa. She's saying, it's so refreshing to see plants to bring our town back to some sort of normalcy. Uh, we, as, Miami, as Lakers, we're used to common sense and continue to use social distancing, mask, gloves, and so on. Uh, so you're starting to hear there's a desire that folks want to see these conversations, see these things move forward. And they're asking, too, are there any new cases, uh, Mr. Manager? I know you talked about that already. Yeah, the, once again, the number of cases that we have tested positive in Miami Lakes are 43. That's no change from yesterday. And, it, and in fact, it's only an increase of two new cases over the last nine days. That's an incredible uh, flattening of the curve here in our little uh, town of Miami Lakes. And that's great news and that's a great, uh, that's a tribute to the Miami Lakers and really adhering to the guidance from the CDC and all the medical professionals. Eddie Blanco, when Maria Gomez wants to know, when are they going to open the beauty salons and how are they going to manage the people going in? Um, the timing on this, as uh, the manager alluded to, the, the schedule, it seems like based on the way the parks was handled, it's likely that the mayor's office will have some indication of where and how these businesses will reopen. In the next seven to 10 days, we'll have guidance from the county as to what they expect the small businesses. And those are gonna be a schedule that's gonna involve small retail, uh, restaurants, uh, 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 beauty salons and hair salons, things that are, are, are a little bit more close proximity. All of those hotels, all of that is in different segments um, and they're all being handled differently and treated differently uh, because they all have different risk and different opportunities to curb the, the risk. So. Uh, it, it's not all clear right now, but I, I would expect that within the next 10 days or so, we'll have guidelines from the county mayor's office. And I know those guidelines you're giving recommendations on, and a lot of our other folks are giving recommendations on, which is so important. Uh, Mr. Manager, Jeremy Cobb wants to know, are there any talks of extending the curfew? I know every community around us, Hialeah, Hialeah Gardens, I believe Obalaka, Miami Gardens, and uh, Jeremy's uh, asking that question. I know we discussed it uh, this past Tuesday. Yeah, the, uh, the curfew expired on Thursday morning, just to make sure that it was completely and not just leave it up to chance. In the order that I signed on uh, Thursday afternoon, extending the state of emergency, I made it uh, an affirmative uh, announcement on that order that we are terminating the curfew. So the curfew uh, completed and finished on Thursday morning. And right now there's absolutely, there's no plans to extend or create, establish a new curfew. Thank you, uh, Eddie. And this is uh, something else. Maybe I don't know if you guys have talked about this already. Maria Figueroa, what will be the, dis the new disinfecting requirements for businesses? Again, that, that is part, definitely part of the, 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 the topic and discussion. What, what are the touch points? How, what are the hot touch points inside a business? How should they be disinfected? How many people should be in a building? Uh, what is the number of people per square footage? Um, you know, how to treat all, the, all of those questions are all being thrown into a big bucket of questions and, and answers and ideas. And then reviewed by the medical professionals who know better on that side what is being done in the hospitals is also being considered 
what's happening all over the world and the country, data and all that information is all being mixed in so that we can come up with a plan that's not necessarily a perfect plan, but a plan that is executable and it's good and so that it would keep the curb low or going down so that we can continue to, to move forward in business while not affecting the lives of people. And what's, what's really great is recent aquí in, la, in nuestra comunidad start submitting those ideas and questions because uh, Eddie's taking those directly to the infectious disease doctors. He's putting, I mean, these things in writing. He's sending it to them and he's at that table uh, making those uh, those discussions and having those discussions right now. He said, I mean, recent aquí in nuestra comunidad, si tienen ideas de cómo reabrir la economía aquí, eh, mándasela a Eric. Eric está trabajando con, con el condado en este momento, eh, representando la comunidad a los otros para reabrir la economía, nuestra comunidad, lo más antes posible. Eh, Suzanne Fernandez, will Canine Cove be open once the parks are open? The draft that I saw are the top lots and uh, doggy parks are probably not going to be in the first wave of openings. So that's, that's, that's some of the... Uh, information is going to be uh, issued out publicly on Monday or Tuesday, probably Monday. So the, the last draft that I saw uh, from our parks director indicated that the top lots and the, uh, and the canine cove or those puppy type uh, doggy uh, parks are not going to be in the first wave. That doesn't mean they're going to not open, but it will probably be a week or two after that that those will be able to be uh, reopened. Eddie, Maria Figueroa wants to know where she can submit her questions, ideas, comments. Uh, do you want folks that have those uh, those comments in our economy just submit, it, submit them here and you'll read them? Or what are your... No, no, I'll give out my, my phone number. You can send me a text message or call me. 305-403-6446. 305-403-6446. I'd love to hear from business owners, community people. Whatever you input you have, all the input will be taken and, and delivered over to the county. 305-403-6446. So you heard it from the chair of our Economic Development Committee. You got ideas, you got comments, you got questions. Submit it to them, send them a text message. Uh, let's start working together and let's start creating this game plan that another committee's working on and, uh, and hopefully the county gets on it. I know we have a special call coming up soon. I don't see any other questions or comments. You know, we'll give you another minute before we turn this off and we'll be back uh, tomorrow. Mr. Manager, any closing thoughts? No, I just want to remind everybody, we, we see light at the end of the tunnel. It's not the time to get careless and then not the time to get reckless. So we, we can see light very close. So now we got to maintain what's gotten us here, right? We got to continue what has gotten us here, which is adherence to the medical advice with the facial coverings, with the hand washing, with the social distancing. Don't let your guard down just yet. We're not there yet. We haven't crossed the goal line. Please. Eddie, any closing remarks on the local economy and what the work you guys are doing? Yes. Uh, let's, let's remain hopeful. Let's remain positive and, and understand that we are going to do this in phases. Do it slowly so that we can... Uh, Keep uh, keep these numbers low and keep our and get our businesses open. We can we can accomplish. We believe we can accomplish both by doing it with a very methodical and staged approach, and that's the approach that we're recommending. Homero Cruz, Homero Cruz has a question. Uh, when is the opening date, uh, Homero? Um, that can mean many things. That uh, on on parks, we're going to be getting the the information from the county on Monday. It looks like Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, we'll be submitting our stuff to, to reopen to the public and letting everybody know. Eh, Señor Homero Cruz está preguntando cuándo es el día que se va a re reabrir. Eh, número uno, los parques, parece el lunes vamos a coger las regulaciones del condado. Para el miércoles ya, los otros vamos a empezar sacando la información para nuestros residentes para reabrir todos los parques aquí en, en nuestra comunidad, pero con ciertas eh, regulaciones. But when it comes in regards to our local shops that are closed, our local non-businesses, uh, uh, Eddie can talk to you a little bit more about that. I know there's no exact date, but I know that there are dates and expectations from him who's giving those recommendations from the county and how that timeline's going to look. 
Yeah, uh, we, we would love to see the businesses. Um, we would love to see the businesses open as soon as possible, but we need to know what the medical advice are and what those recommendations would be to do it in a safe manner. So right now we don't have a date. I expect that within the next 10 days, the county mayor's office will be uh, releasing, you know, at some point the, the information that we can then disseminate out to the public. But it's unclear and it's really up to the county mayor's office at this time. Dude, the parks uh, more than likely will be opening on Wednesday and Thursday, but that is something the manager's working on getting the guidelines, but in regards to our parks, that's what it's gonna look like. Uh, but you heard it, you heard it from our folks. We're hopeful, we're optimistic. We know that we're getting through this. We're working hard. We're very proud of our entire community. Estamos bien entusiasmados porque sabemos que ya podemos ver el fin de este problema. Es más importante la reapertura de los parques, la economía de nuestra comunidad, haciendo de una manera donde no hay más infecciones aquí en Miami Lakes y están seguros que trabajamos con los doctores. So Miami Lakers, we are here for you. Call us 305-364-6100. Text Eddie Blanco if you have any ideas on how to reopen our economy. He's going to be working on that with the county. Reach out to us. We are here for you uh, from our from our, our our council, our staff, our manager, our volunteers. We have an amazing, amazing team in our community. So reach out to us. We got your back, and together we will get through this. Take care, Miami Lakers, and God bless.